Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Ruben. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Global Blockchain Business Council, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to BBC's Virtual Members Forum, a bi-weekly webinar showcasing the innovative work of our members around the world. Today, we have Francisco Lomas and Xavier Santoro of Kruger Group, one of Ecuador's most recognized technology companies. They are going to give a presentation on Kruger's platform and approach to making blockchain adoption easier for businesses. Before we begin, I would like to briefly introduce Francisco and Xavier. Xavier Centro, Chief Growth Officer at Kruger Core, has more than 20 years experience in the consulting and technology sector and has developed high projects throughout Latin America for customers in the financial, retail, and telecommunication sectors. Francisco Lomas, Chief Innovation Officer at Kruger Group, has 17 years of experience in IT projects and research and development. He participated in several technology endeavors around the world in industries, including banking, telecommunications, consumer packaged goods, government, and others. We welcome your questions at any point during Cisco and Xavier presentation and webinar. Please submit them via the Q&A tab at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and then we will take them at the end of the presentation. Thank you, Xavier um, and Francisco for joining us. I will now hand things over to you. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, first, uh, well, yes, uh, my name is, first, let me introduce ourselves a little bit more. Uh, my name is uh, Xavier Santoro, I'm the Chief Growth Officer in Kruger Corporation, and I'm in charge of business development, which means that I will ha have to develop new businesses, lines, new markets, or both. With me is Francisco Lomas, or Pancho Lomas, hey. uh, Francisco, the Chief Innovator Officer, and in that role, he is in charge of what we know, the, the Kruger Garage, which uh, is where we explore and it develops in the technical sense, new ways to apply technology to real uh, business cases. I will talk a little bit about uh, Kruger, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> uh, Kruger was founded 27 years ago by a guy who realized how difficult it was to get a technology solution in a timely manner. Uh, all of those years ago, people were not talking about agility, but it was what we were doing then and what we're doing right now. Uh, we have a true passion for life-changing innovations and with all the complexities, we try to let our customers to focus on their main business. Nowadays, Kruger Corporation is uh, in 13 countries and counting, uh, we just started our operations in Mexico. Um, we have a team of 350 people uh, working with us and more than 300 customers around the world um, in industries like uh, retail, banking, insurance, CPG, telecommunications, etc. And we have delivered more than 1,500 uh, successful uh, projects that has allowed our customers to bring their businesses, uh, I hope, <laughs> to their next level. Um, now, what do we do? Uh, as you can see, we help our customers to achieve their business objectives through innova innovative solutions powered by digital transformation. In short, we try to achieve results in an agile and uh, efficient way, focusing on providing great experiences for our customers or for customers' uh, customers. And uh, it doesn't move. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, and we have two business lines. On one hand, we have Kruger Labs uh, when we accelerate digital startups. And on the other hand, we have all the consulting and, and business solutions uh, that we have to use to help our customers uh, to achieve uh, their potential. Uh, finally, uh, this is the short introduction of Kruger's. Um, as I told you before, wow, sorry again. Internet is a little bit slow. Um, 
wait a minute, something is not working. There you okay. go. Yeah, thank you. And um, as I told you before, we have a passion for life-changing innovations. So, um, our business nowadays is mainly focused on Latin America and Spain, where we have customers uh, all around the world, for example, in the Netherlands, on the Czech Republic. Now, let's go down to business. Okay, great. I'm going to talk a little bit about what blockchain is, how it works and its benefits, um, just in case. Uh, then I will talk about the challenges that technology has in order to be applied to real world problems right now. And then Francisco will explain to us the way we believe uh, we may help solve those challenges, okay? And the whole presentation is going to take no more than 40 minutes, we hope. So let's start. Uh, well, as you all know, blockchain was invented by a person or a group of people we don't know really, uh, using the name of Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008. And to serve as the public transaction ledger of the cryptocurrency uh, Bitcoin. Since its invention, uh, blockchain has held the promise of changing the world by providing decentralization. The data container relayed within the blockchain architecture cannot be controlled by a single entity transactions and information stored within are immutable and transparent. So that means that once a transaction is added, it can be changed, taken down or hidden. With regard to transparency, anyone can see what was sent and when, and one can assume that there are two individuals behind a blockchain transaction, but not exactly who or why, okay? So in short, that is what blockchain is. And, um, what you're seeing right now, because the real thing is, well, uh, that's the theory, what is happening in the real world. So what you are uh, looking at now is uh, this figure is based on a list of 132 use cases grouped into industry segments that have been frequently mentioned in public discussions, reports, and press releases. The key words here are frequently mentioned. That is because even though a lot of money has been put into testing the technology, it's a real fact that it is not yet a mainstream technology, okay? So um, even though we have a lot of uh, projects going on on several customers in all countries in the world, there is not yet a huge, big uh, impact of blockchain uh, in the world. And that's where we're trying to get, right? But before getting into the problems, let's talk a little bit more uh, about how blockchain works. I'm trying there you move. go. Okay, thank you. And um, well, the principles of blockchain are not as alien as it might appear. I mean, it's not very complex. A blockchain finally is a decentralized and secure database built over a secure network used to store data and relay information. That's all. Blockchain records and relay information and transactional data through blocks, hence the name, right? And parties involved in these transactions can remain anonymous while enjoying security, transactional transparency, speed, and cost efficiency, in short. But how it works? Well, first of all, you have, a, you have to have a transaction which, here, which has a sender, a receiver, and the data regarded to the transaction. Uh, data in a blockchain gets recorded in a linear manner. That is, uh, with each new block within a blockchain containing data from all previous blocks. The data within these blocks is encrypted through the use of complex cryptographic uh, principles. And uh, before being added to a blockchain, transactions must first pass certain validations. This validation, at least in a public uh, network, is performed by miners. And for the efforts, miners enjoy monetary reward in the form of, for example, uh, Bitcoins. Okay, so in short, that is how it works. Now, passing to the next slide. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Pancho, I believe you're going to help me passing the slides because it's not working from this side. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, how secure is blockchain really? Uh, the whole point of using a blockchain is to let people, in particular people who don't trust one another, share valuable data in a secure, tamper-proof way. What makes this system theoretical tamper-proof is two things. First, 
a cryptographic fingerprint unique to each block, which is the hash that you can see uh, in the graphic, and a consensus protocol, which is the process by which the nodes in the network agree on a shared history. So the majority of the nodes in the network has to agree before your transaction gets uh, validated. So in theory, blockchain is quite secure. But implementing it in practice is harder. So no matter how tamper-proof a blockchain protocol is, it doesn't exist in the vacuum. I mean, we are using blockchain to automate a business process that needs probably other technological components with, uh, more than the, only the blockchain. So the cryptocurrency hacks driving recent headlines are usually failures at places where blockchain systems connect with the real world. Okay, for example, in software clients or third party application. So even though you are not going to be able to hack the blockchain itself, you may be able to hack the systems. But again, blockchain is kind of secure, but we do not forget that uh, blockchain is not the only thing that is involved in uh, solving a, a problem, a customer's problem. Hey, Pancho? Yeah. So summing up, Uh, what are the main benefits of using blockchain? First, it has security. We have been talking about that. There are several ways blockchain is more secure than any other uh, record keeping systems. A greater transparency, transaction stories are becoming more transparent through the use of blockchain technology. You have improved traceability. We have increased efficiency and speed because we're streamlining and automating processes with blockchain. Transactions can be completed faster and more efficiently. And we can reduce costs and time because with blockchain, you don't need as many third parties or middlemen to make warranties. So in theory, everything is cheaper and faster because processors are potentially simpler. Uh, Pancho? There you go. Now, can blockchain be applied on any business model? Well, the answer is yes, but the point is, even though we could apply blockchain to many business processes, we have to find the use cases where blockchain creates the more value. Okay, that's, 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 uh, that's what we have to do, okay? And uh, here we have the problem, okay? McKinsey recently published a paper called Blockchain's Occam Problem. The title is a reference to the philosophical standard of Occam's razor, which expresses that the best means through an issue is generally the most um, straightforward one, okay? The best means through an issue is generally the most straightforward one. That means that we have a complex uh, problem. The, the most likely solution is the simplest one, in short, okay? While well, recognizing there's been an impressive interest in the innovation around uh, blockchain, for example, the financial industry has invested around $1.7 billion yearly uh, on experimentation. Right now, as I said before, blockchain is not yet a mainstream uh, technology. That's, that's the fact, okay? And that is because blockchain is only pertinent if it is the easiest response to a specific issue and if there is a reasonable business case for its utilization, okay? Now, there is a really long development cycle to get from an idea to a proof of concept to something enterprise grade to actually be implemented. So that is what we believe is the basic problem. It's just too complex, too cumbersome, and too expensive sometimes to experiment using blockchain. To finally find a relevant business case, we have to be able to somehow experiment, we have to play, to be able to play with the technology and we'll find its natural home. I mean, it's the right business case. So businesses find real value from it. And we have to be able to play with the technology um, in a way that is fast and cheap. Okay, so I believe, or we believe, that is the main problem right now we have that somehow tampers our ability to experiment with blockchain and uh, makes to find the right case a little bit harder to get. Now, having said that, now Pancho is now going to explain us how we believe we can help to fix this problem. Pancho. Okay, thank you, Javi. After Javi taken the, the hard part of explaining what is blockchain and what you can, how you can use it, well, I will take the easy part, that's the journey. Okay, we have been doing this, uh, this project of blockchain for some time now, and we have, as Javi said, okay, we found 
and face these problems, okay? The, the first thing is that you cannot really uh, find a good case or, or you can have a lot of cases, okay? But you have to be sure that your case will be able to get a benefit from having blockchain as a technology in the back, okay? After that, if you find out that the, the case will be something that will be really benefit, okay? Uh, then you have to go to the details and see, okay, which elements are um, visible or which elements you need to really do a very good uh, traceability or how we can incorporate, of course. And then after you have to prove it, of course, with an MVP that this can be a really good project, okay? So that's why we call it the blockchain journey. And we uh, did some steps and, and some methodologies, uh, technologies and everything to solve this, okay? Uh, also, for example, we have been doing this, as I told you, with several clients from several industries, uh, agriculture, financials, uh, everything. So that's where we are getting this experience and knowledge to you guys. So basically the first step is to take the case, okay? And do some questions, okay? We uh, divide these questions in some aspects, operation aspects, data aspects about the participants. And uh, if you have trusted third party, you know already this is very important for the case. And where all these questions are uh, quantitative uh, qualified, so you can have an assessment saying, okay, if you, for example, are having high value responses on all these questions, mostly sure you will be having a very good case to use blockchain. If you're not having that, maybe another technology will be better to apply. For example, if you're not having a trusted device uh, in the middle, it's very possible that you really don't need that amount of effort of putting a, a blockchain case here, okay? Or for example, if you have only two participants and the participants are not really requiring transparency, but the, if one, when each other are trusting, that kind of things can be a, a deal breaker. Overall, you can in fact put the blockchain technology in the back for sure, but maybe you will be having a hard time later, okay? That's why we, with these questions, okay, have a result, as you can see here, for example, for two simulations, where if you, for example, your answers are having represented here in the in the orange triangle, okay, are under the lower limit, mostly sure your case is not a good fit for a uh, blockchain, okay? But if your answers go below the lower limit here, again, the right uh, triangle, the orange triangle is, the, is your answers, okay? And the uh, small yellow triangle at the lower limits, then for sure you will have a lot of benefits in this case from applying in this case, uh, blockchain technologies, okay? This again is doing with some questionnaire, as you can see before, we put the, uh, in this case, we put uh, the values and everything with you, and then you have it in like one hour, okay? So, uh, if your case can be really uh, a good uh, case for a blockchain, okay? Then after, when you already uh, ironed out that big question that is, hey, it's really going to work, okay? Then you can go to the process assessment. Why did we designed this process assessment? You know, actually we have been doing a lot of uh, innovation practices for all the industries, okay? From, again, from the industries like uh, financials, uh, from agro, from government, retail, CPG, whatever you, you mentioned it, okay? We designed this canvas, okay, to order, first of all, which process you will have it. In, in this example, we get it a process from a, a coffee exporter. Okay, we in Latin America have a lot of coffee and we like it, we really like it. And then, for example, one of the clients was saying, hey, I would like to, in this case, to show my final client that we process the coffee in a very specific way, accomplishing all, all the laws, accomplishing all the quality measures and why our coffee is really excelling from another products, okay? So basically, for example, you will this in this canvas, okay, that we call the blockchain journey canvas, okay, you will identify which elements you will need to be triced, okay, from the product, from the asset, asset, okay, which elements in this case are the steps on the process, and also which tools you will use it, okay, which, uh, uh, and part of this, you will see, okay, for example, for the different roles and the different steps, which elements are in the, in the asset, okay, which attributes of the asset, will be shown or will be modified for, uh, for example, for a role like is the producer or the plant or the client, if we like to only to see the things, that kind of thing. So you will order very well in this case, as you can see here, for example, who is doing what and which elements of information will be shown or modified, okay, for all the process. So with this order and this canvas, you can see 
the whole picture of your uh, of, of your process okay if it's a large process of course we will uh, uh, cut it in pieces so we can make it uh, easier to read and easier to implement of course and also uh, you can in this case uh, stop uh, well reduce the complexity in all the implementations right because the first step that we uh, recommend to all the clients is go to for um, mvp so you can in this case be really sure of what we are doing okay and also, of course, show early value to all, the, all your clients. Okay. After, for example, here you will see a full and a full example of what we do with a client. Okay. Also, in this case, with this element of here, you will have okay every element that you need. And then, of course, you can go to another steps of the process. So, let's say, for example, design some CX or UX if you need it. Okay. And with these two practices, as you can see here, you first of all are very sure that you have a case. And second, you have the clear case of what you have to do. Then, of course, you need to go to the products. And in the old experience that we have with this, we say, okay, starting with this information is very good, okay? We develop it as, you, as we told you, the methodologies to do these kind of things. But start to code an MVP from ground is kind of hard, okay? That's when we go and create blockchain, a blockchain, what we call and blockchain is our knowledge in a set of practices and technologies ready to use and produce tailor-made solutions, okay? Delivered in a logical and practical way. About these ones, we have specialized some part of this uh, framework and these tools, okay? And we call it, for example, the application of these ones, a clean, for example, is a solution for uh, asset traceability, especially for product traceability, for PL operations, merchandise uh, transport, uh, restaurant operations, and much more, of course. This is kind of specialized. Uh, coin, for example, if you want to uh, tokenize your assets, your your can be digital assets or can be physical assets, you can go to this solution that is Coin. In this case, Coin will help you, of course, to have a, a virtual representation of your asset, and even you can exchange it if you would like to. No, okay. Cobalt is in this case a solution specialized to replace or bring you the third party value, rather you go into a third party to hold it and, and have been charged for the third party to hold whatever you need. Uh, in this case, you will trust the blockchain, okay? You will trust the, the, all the participants there and you can replace that one. As Javi said before, you will lower the cost and everything, that would be really great. And that's uh, the intention with Cobalt. It's again, it's a specialist solution here. And Authentica, Guys, uh, for example, this is very interesting because if you, for example, have an artwork or something that have high value and you need certification that the value on the origin is, is the, the one that are selling to you, then you can go to Authentica and say, hey, we can, in this case, hold the original certificate and we can certify that, yes, uh, the author of the artwork or whoever is producing the product, okay, is really certifying that, yes, this one is an authentic one. And you can exchange, of course, the ownership of this uh, asset between whatever you want, okay? Wh whoever you want. Now, for example, it's really easy to apply, as we said, as you saw before, the information that you have already, the asset and everything. We have the platform where you can, in this case, model, okay, all these elements, the company that you found there, okay, the asset itself that you already discovered in the previous workshop, the process through the asset uh, is going, okay? And of course, the traceability that implies you're going moving through the process, right? So you will enter in the platform, of course, and you will create, as I told you, the asset here, for example, and you customize all the uh, attributes that the asset will have. As you can see here, for example, you will have the GPS location, the way, the fruit size, for example, in this case, we were showing you the coffee. Let me remember you that one the grain size with the grain shape, or whatever you need in this case, okay? You can customize yourself. Uh, you don't really have a, uh, to have a developer to do these kind of things, but you will do it in a self-service way, okay? After that, you will, uh, in this case, choose the transactions, the steps, where in this case, for example, the process will say, okay, I will uh, collect the, the coffee, then I will uh, pack the coffee, then I will process and they will send it. Okay, then you can say, okay, this will be the transactions. And in each transaction, I will assign, for example, whoever in the roles, of course, whoever will be able to do the transaction, whoever will be uh, able to read the data on the transaction. And even you can go to the green level of uh, having the uh, attributes per transaction here that you can see or modify, okay? Again, you don't need a developer to do this. 
okay you only can you can go and uh, customize it yourself okay and then of course which uh, which process will be uh, ready without you can reorder and, and put the transaction in the order that you need okay basically you can do it itself yourself again okay and you can in this case move around whatever you need and of course add another transactions and you can see a very interesting way to uh, how the, the transaction is being done okay also of course as you can see when you have all the informations the previous step you already validated the case you already in this case gather all the information that you have okay and on the process you can model this one in a very short way a very quick way okay as far as 15 minutes if you have everything clear and some experience on the platform it can take you more than one one day more no more really so you will have it uh, very ready to produce and use uh, in this case mvp in like less than a week for sure so of course bigger process will take a more more time okay but and also you when you are you're operating everything you will have in this case some dashboards that will help you to see hey this uh, asset is in this state uh, how many processes are there and anything that the health of the process will uh, let you know okay now what is behind in this case and supporting of the cap blockchain framework is a, a platform that is called SUA, very nice platform, very good platform. It's something that is filling a lot of gaps in, the, in this blockchain part, in this blockchain world, that is hiding the complexity, okay, of how you can provision the infrastructure that a uh, blockchain will have it. Because uh, for guys that already have uh, been in this, uh, this kind of projects, you know, there is a lot of things to do. You have to provision the servers, you have to provision the certificates, you have to do a lot of really uh, technical things. And these guys, SUA, are solving all these kind, all these problems. You can go into the platform, okay, in a very easy way, and create a blockchain like nothing, okay. This uh, the technical time to deploy and everything, they will make it uh, work. Even though you have a very simple case, you can even uh, manage to deploy it over there. We deployed with SUA or or solutions, okay, and we are very happy because it works very straightforward, okay. Again. What is the differentiator? Uh, the differentiator, uh, the differentiator on SUA, okay, with uh, against another platforms. Uh, the easy of use, as I told you, is really easy to use. It's a, it's a promise, accomplished promise, okay. The trust enablement, you can in this case manage your different nodes if you want to on the black in the platform, okay. You have two, three nodes, four, four nodes, so you can do it. You can manage it even though if there are different platforms. I mean, uh, AWS on-premise platforms or Azure, or Oracle, whatever you have. They can, in this case, manage it, uh, those nodes also. The security is built in by design. Okay, the guys uh, always uh, are very careful with the security. Okay, the compliance by design is something that I would like to highlight here because the guys are also, also are letting you to integrate and use uh, know your client platforms, antimony and other platforms very easily. So you can be sure that everything is really covered. Okay, and the transition from the simple uh, simple code to full code is very simple. I mean. You can go into uh, and play and put a very simple asset in and, and everything and put some forms, very basic. But you can go, for example, a Rask with Cap Blockchain with a very big platform that lets you do way more than that. So it's really easy to use. Again, so uh, it's, a, it's our base in this case to use to bring all the, uh, the, the solutions to life. Okay. And it's meeting in halfway. I mean, we have doing Cap Blockchain. To meet the business side, I mean, you don't really have to be a, a technical guy, as you can see with Cap Blockchain, to model a case here on MVP. And again, you don't have to be a technical guy to provide all the infrastructure and the MVP. So you, in this case, are covering all the cycle with a Cap Blockchain plus SUA platform, right? So, for example, I would like to show you here a, a real world example that we are doing now, where we are already deployed and, and delivered this one. It's a platform where you can see how a banana producer was cultivating and delivering the, the banana to your uh, table, right? And the guys will, in this case, in the in the, in the end product that will be a, a it's sorry, it's a mobile application. You can see the story of how these uh, products are reaching to your table. Okay, and this is going to Europe from Ecuador to Europe, and you can see, of course. The certificate you can see how you go on and even though if the guys for example would like to add more data they can add it very easily as you can see in the cap blockchain part they can add another step and then of course the, the application in this case will take it that that, that, that data and will show it of course some customization the ux of course but you can have it very quickly right so this is how we are taking 
these real world cases, okay, from our side. And now, for example, you can see here what we are doing. SUA as the base infrastructure, as I told you, in the, taking the guys from the infra side to meet the business side with Cap Blockchain. Okay, we are covering all the full cycle, technical side with SUA, business side with Cap Blockchain and the variants. Okay, and of course you can produce the MVP, of course, with the help of the uh, all the methodology that we show you. And as I can tell you, uh, we have deployed MVPs in less than one, than one month, and of course the time around that you can have it is four or five days. But guys, if you want to, you can have it as a very, very fast, as you can see. Okay, and you'll be very sure that it's a, a real case that we will be having benefits from blockchain. Okay. So now it's time for questions. I see there is some questions over there. Uh, thank you guys for your time. I would like to in this case uh, see here the questions. Okay. Uh, if you have you would like to answer some, I will answer also too. Uh, here. What is the state of the blockchain adoption in Latin America? Uh, basically, uh, we are having a lot of push in all Latin America. Uh, we are having a, a lot of MVPs uh, in all the on the continent. Uh, it's kind of hard. Yes, it's a little bit hard. Why? Because of course there is a, a well technological barriers like internet penetration and everything that don't let you go as far as we, we would like you to to go. But I think it, it, you are having. We are having a very good time now and for the next two years especially you will see a lot of uh, uh, production solutions that will you have it now no okay uh, what do you have pancho I, i'd like to i'd like to mention about that what is the state of, of blockchain adoption in latin america for Please. example what we're seeing right now particularly in the financial sector we are looking uh we're seeing that a lot of customers not a lot but usually the most um of those the banks that uh are the most advanced technically or uh, the most innovative are talking with us trying to find uh, the use cases. Uh, we are finally finding some use cases uh, in Colombia. I, I cannot say the customer, but in Colombia we're working with uh, uh, two MVPs right now, um, which has very real uh, applications. So we believe that as uh, Pancho said, within the next uh, two years, there's going to be a boom in this kind of projects. Uh, I guess and I believe that the pandemic has helped us a little bit because every everybody is thinking on digital. So um, everybody has been uh, talking about open banking has been talking about uh, blockchain and right now they are trying to find real case uses forced by the situation in our countries right now. Yes, this is a very good uh, compliment having in this part. It's interesting how in this Latin America, well, in every every part of the world, it will be a, in this case a very good solution. You have cases, very complicated cases. For example, in, in Cambodia, the guys are using blockchain to use a, a cryptocurrency from the mainstream. So basically, Latin America for us in this case, and to, in taking also forward the next question, uh, will be expanding as I told you the next two years in a very broad way in Latin America, especially. Okay. Yes, there will be technical barriers, especially uh, the internet penetration, but for sure it will be solving and then there will be some low tech solutions that will be helping to support that kind of things. Okay. And when, for example, where do you expect to see the most blockchain growth moving forward in terms of industry? Uh, in this case, for example, as you can see in the, in the studies, the banking industry is taking a lot. But for sure, for sure, in my special, in my personal appreciation, uh, I think the, the traceability, especially in the supply chain of uh, agriculture parts will be really high. Uh, the people, you know, with the pandemic, uh, we have seen a lot of cases that the people will like to be sure how their products are being treated. So, and of course they want to be sure that every, every measure has been taken. So it will be very important to have these kind of things. And also, for example, uh, with the upcoming uh, vaccine that is promised by some uh, laboratories by now, you would like to have the, to, um, to understand it's not a country trade, for example, that would be a really good case. And you have a lot of cases on that one. It's a very good case also. So basically in the industry terms, uh, agriculture for sure will be spawning a lot. Uh, we're, if we're growing a lot, also banking, of course, and whatever you would like to do and export, for example, CPG or whatever you would like to, it, it will be a very moving industry here in blockchain. And for example, next question. And yeah. again, again, Pancho, uh, in terms of our commercial efforts, for example, we have three to one 
uh, opportunities in the agriculture sector versus uh, financial sector. Those both two are moving very fast, but we have right now three to one in terms of uh, kind of opportunities we're working on right now. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right, that's right. What about Ecuador specifically? We already have some cases here. Uh, there is uh, some uh, milk producers already doing that one, for example. This is a very case, uh, famous case. It's not produced by us, but it's done by, by we, we have followed with that case very, very closely. Uh, also, the shrimp, uh, shrimps also, there is some cases over there. Uh, the banana case that we show you, it's also from Ecuador. So we are spawning a lot, actually. And that's, uh, for example, the most notorious one. Well, we have another one, a municipality of one of, uh, one of the biggest cities here in Ecuador. I have already blockchain to hold the the property uh, information also uploaded over there. So it's just starting to get uh, a good momentum. Also, there is a bank that the guys already did uh, the the loyalty platform for them over blockchain. So there is no small cases now here in Ecuador. It's very interesting that part. Uh, it does the, the ones that I know specifically. And uh, maybe have you have an, another one? I don't know. Uh, no, those are the main customers. the main ones, yeah, You're right. So uh, next one, what kind of blockchain project does Kruger most often assist with? Uh, as I told you before, the I think the most abundant are both in financial and agriculture for sure. Um, we are starting to go into CPG a little bit more, of course, but the, in those industries are the most uh, uh, acclaimed ones, I have to say, yes. Uh, the, those ones are having a lot of demand, especially as I told you, because the the demanding part of uh, the people saying, hey, I would like to prove that uh, our products are really, in this case, done in the way that are meant to be, right? So, and the financial part, especially is to reduce the intermediaries. I will lo lower the costs, especially that's the, the idea over there, right? So, um, does Krug assist clients with around the world? Yes, we are around the world. We have clients around the world. Uh, we have, uh, we are in, thir in 13 countries. Uh, we are in Europe, in Latin America, Central America, North America, uh, we have something in Asia also, so yes, we can help you. Uh, and we reduce uh, um, mostly in the jurisdiction where you have the an option. Now we we uh, we have been having clients in Vietnam, in Israel, in India, whatever in the part of the world. So no problem with that. Uh, what blockchains does Kroger work with? Uh, Hyperledger, for is something uh, especially. Um, and Ethereum, of course, is the, the most ones that we, we would like to work. And that's because you have there the, the combination of public and privacy, okay, on private uh, blockchains, okay? And basically because we are doing mostly, mostly, uh, I have to say most, not most, all the cases are mostly for enterprises. So that's why uh, we choose uh, basically the Hyperledger project, uh, Fabric especially. And uh, also we use Bisu if it's needed, okay? And for the public, if we have to do some public, we are going to Ethereum, of course. Uh, another one here. How has the pandemic affected this crooked blockchain business? Do you think pandemic has accelerated the rate of adoption? Yes, for sure. Yes, uh, yes for sure. And, and something that we, in this case, uh, as uh, we mentioned in the, in the previous questions, the people is eager to prove that they, they, their products, their processes are transparent, that the information has is available to everyone that needs it. And that's, of course, it accelerated the adoption. And we are doing a big push, of course, especially, for example, with us, uh, what, what we show you, the CAP blockchain and also the SUA partnership. We are the guys who are representing the SUA platform, especially for Latin America and other countries. Okay. So we believe in the, in the blockchain solutions. We are doing a lot of research and development also, uh, even though we are also in, in trying to do some other uh, initiatives with another entities, uh, big entities also, um, for the business on blockchain is, uh, well, start to rising and rising really in a really high rate and very fast pace, okay? Uh, can you please share your experience in blockchain use cases in product development domain? Uh, I would like to clarify what is the, the product development domain. I mean, if you, for example, would like to take it like intellectual property, maybe if you can specify this one a little bit more, it would be really glad to. Uh, and before I will set, uh, go to the last and then try to, to answer the, the previous one. Did you work with the university for implementing blockchain? Uh, actually, not directly for that, but we are now uh, doing it uh, with the university, a local university in, in Ecuador. We are doing some plans to, in this case, do some 
uh, knowledge transfer to the guys and of course uh, to start to develop a little bit more uh, in that case right because in latin america uh, the research and development part is, is very interesting it's very high also but it's not higher as, as we'd like to and we are as kruger are committed to uh, help on this part to to develop the, this technology not also not only for the commercial side but also in the academic part we are like uh, we are going to contribute in that part also as i told you we already have a, a com, uh, an agreement with our university we are starting to work with that part in some of the spaces and one of the spaces of course will be blockchain in that car in that part okay and for a tool, uh, maybe he, okay, yes, the intellectual property, also the product design and validation in manufacturing industry. Of course, here for the, uh, the intellectual property part, you can use blockchain, of course. Uh, we have been, in this case, uh, exploring those cases. We have been doing one officially, okay? But it's, it's a very interesting question. Why? Uh, you know that in, for example, in the intellectual property part, you will have a lot of participants, for example, you can have uh, in the, you, if you would like to, for example, produce a product that you need to use another patent or another uh, trade secret or something from a third party, then you will need to say, hey, I would like to use it, okay? So then you, for example, can have a blockchain where you have the patents and who is using it. And you, for example, can charge and then do the charge back of the use of the patent with the, uh, in this case, with the blockchain, for example. And uh, you can, of course, uh, try to um, do the visibility to everyone who is using which part. So basically, and the product validation part can be done also because when you go to the market or the small markets to go to do the uh, product validation with the, I don't know, questionnaires or small um, show of the MVPs, you can also trace and put that once, uh, of course, as a, as a third party. Uh, the results of the investigation there, so you can have the feedback implemented in the products. So uh, it's a very interesting case that can be done for sure. And of course, we would like to, if you guys would like to, we can chat a little bit more about that and, um, and it would be very interesting to do that. So uh, I think we have no more questions here, maybe. Yes, we have no more questions here. Thank you so much, Francisco and Xavier. This was such um, an illuminating presentation as well as being very uh, visually compelling. I think it was helpful for us all to learn more about Kruger and your work. Um, we would like to thank you for being part of our virtual members forum and invite everyone who participated today to our next forum, which is actually our Global Leaders Series on Tuesday, November 17th with Ed Basie, who is a member of the House of Lords in the UK. He's a member of the Communications and Digital Committee and the former Minister of Culture. But thank you so much again, um, Francisco and Xavier. And please, everyone listening, if there are questions, reach out to us and we can connect you with Kruger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.